the Badlands, home to some of the strangest creatures ever to walk this earth. They were designed to serve in the event of war, but they have long since been abandoned. Now, without masters, they have reverted to the one thing they understand. Fighting. We begin our journey on CP Dust Bowl, commonly known as the Heart of the War, this desert is where it all began, and after so many years it will be thought that the blue team had developed some common sense. However, that is not the case and they steal suicides into the red team at the beginning of every mission. They have yet to realise that the red team places sentries in the exact same spots every time, but one day, they will learn. The red team's goal of course is to prevent the control points from being captured by the blue team. One method they have used to great effects is the strategy of shooting through walls that is being demonstrated by this heavy. However, he soon decides that it's not working in this case and shoots the stairs instead. The blue team intends on capturing the first control point using Uber in an attempt at pushing past the red team's line of sentries. It looks as though it's working, but the red team also has an Uber which they pop, resulting in a moment of uncertainty between the two teams. They know they can't damage each other, so they just stand there, staring, until the Uber runs out, at which point the heavy and medic come to their sentries and retreat. In the aftermath, this heavy appears unsure what to do. The blue team is advancing and after a moment of thought, he decides to try and defend the control point, along with his engineer who attempts to build a sentry. Unfortunately, it is too late and the red team are driven back, leaving blue to capture the control point. Over at control point number two, the engineers are already preparing their line of defence. However, they seem to be having trouble upgrading their sentries. They have both built them in truly awful spots and one of the engineers would rather run around aimlessly than douse the fire on his building. The other engineer eventually upgrades his sentry to level 2, but unfortunately aspires other ideas as he sneaks past the entire red team and places sappers on both turrets. An engineer comes running, but he is too late to save his own sentry before it is destroyed. He then completely ignores the sapper on the level 2 and proceeds to build a sentry in the corner. The second engineer is nowhere to be seen and is presumed dead. Meanwhile, this blue engineer is having significantly more luck than the red team's engineers. He has already built a sentry, a teleporter and a dispenser and upgraded the sentry to level 3. What he is defending though, nobody knows, but he has been cursed by being on the attacking team. Building sentries is all he will ever know, and it is all he will ever do until death claims him. Back at the second control point, the red team has decided to abandon sentries altogether. Instead, they have come up with a much more sophisticated plan. That is, for the entire team to all stand in one place. Nonetheless, as anyone would expect, this turns out to be a terrible idea and they are quickly and brutally massacred, leaving the control point to be captured by the blue team, though at first this scout seems to ignore the obviously deserted area, instead running straight to his death. The rest of the blue team, however, see the opportunity and grasp it, winning the battle, though that was only one of many battles to come. On the way to our next destination, we make a short detour at Koth Nucleus. This visit will be short, but the area demonstrates an important part of the behaviour of bots. For at the beginning of every round, the bots commit a mass suicide, hurling themselves straight to their deaths without even looking back, their eyes fixated on the control point which they have been programmed to capture. They never learn, only obey. And because of this, thousands of bots die every day. Our next location is PL Upward. The blue team here is attempting to blow up the enemy base using a bomb and some conveniently placed tracks. Of course, the red team hasn't thought of removing the tracks. All they know is killing, which doesn't cover manual labour. You'll notice here these demo men are placing some elaborate sticky traps. It doesn't matter where they put them, bots never look anywhere but forward, so they just shoot the sticky bombs in the cart's general direction. Meanwhile, the blue team's engineer is waiting to build his teleporter entrance. At this point, where he will build the exit, not even he knows. But he knows one thing, and that is he must build a teleporter entrance. However, the fight begins, and he has something a bot has never had before. A thought. He decides building a teleporter is a terrible idea, and makes a hasty retreat back into the base. The red demo man is still watching their sticky trap, waiting for the blue team to come out and push the cart. Sure enough, no less than five bots come out and are instantly blown to pieces. After that, the red team appears to have the upper hand. However, the blue team use their uber and manage to push out of the spawn. They quickly employ the popular strategy of everyone pushes the payload even though you only need three people to push it at max speed and it appears to be working well for them as they manage to capture the first point with little to no trouble. But as the rest of the blue team push the cart, the spy has made a discovery. He has never seen such an object and thus is unsure what to do. The decision is quickly made for him though, as the heavy walks past, minigun spinning and bullets spraying everywhere. The spy moves on with his life and stumbles across the red team's sentry. This he understands and he is quick to sap it and the strange red building standing next to it. His joy is short-lived though, as the red pirate sees what's going on and ends the spy's life. 
the engineer doesn't even flinch, just a day in the life of a construction worker. Eventually, the blue team manages to push past the red team's initial line of defences and makes their way towards the second point. However, it appears the blue team is more of a threat to themselves than the red team are, as they once again demonstrate a sheer misunderstanding of fatal drops. Both this demo man and scout think they have what it takes to face the mountain path, but both fall to a sticky end. At this point, the biggest cause of casualties for the blue team seems to be the cliff, as demonstrated by yet another team member not looking where they are going. The casualty rate for the red team, meanwhile, has plummeted due to the lack of blue team to fight. This medic decides that the blue team doesn't need an Uber. The term drop has never been more appropriate. This demo man also falls off the cliff. However, the cause was more because of the fact that he was blown off, as opposed to extreme idiocy. This soldier decides he wants to join the medic. However, at the last second he changes his mind and clings onto the side of the cliff for dear life. His attempts to climb up only make him fall further. For a moment, it looks as though he'll do it, but at the last second he slips, causing both him and a friendly medic to fall to their doom. Despite their lack of coordination, the blue team makes progress. But it's at this point that the blue team are taught an important lesson on how not to push a cart. For one explosion sends the entire team flying. The cliff is still hungry for victims and claims the life of this medic. The rest of the team are unharmed, except for this demo, who lands safely, but jumps to his death anyway. After this obvious setback, the blue team regroup and continue to push the bomb to the enemy base. They manage to succeed in their efforts, but once again they fail to look where they're going, and they only win because of the medic, who for once hasn't walked off the cliff. We now return to our first location, Dust Bowl. After their recent victory, the blue team has decided to take a victory break. The sniper, unfortunately, is not interested and attempts to leave. However, the spawn door denies him this privilege and remains shut. The team's engineer decides now is the time to put his teleport to entrance, and he swiftly does so. But afterwards, he appears to be confused about something, for he constantly rams his face into this chain link fence. Try as he might, though, he is unable to return to the first area. Back inside the blue base, this spy has discovered something incredible located in this very corner. What it is, only he knows, for it exists only in his thoughtless mind. The alarm sounds, signalling the beginning of the fight, and it snaps the spy back to his senses, leaving him dazed and confused. The fight goes well for the blue team, and they soon capture the first control point. But unfortunately for them, their engineer has taken a distinctly pacifistic attitude towards this battle. One can only assume he is making a stand against the ways of war. Either that, or he is just upset over the fact that he wasn't allowed to build his sentry in the first area. Meanwhile, the red team has been assembling a defence on last, and they have decided that standing four soldiers in a row is the best strategy. It may not be the best way to defend a control point, but no one is going to take this rock, especially not with the help of a friendly medic. To help them out, the red team has also employed the help of some engineers, who have in turn built an elaborate sentry nest. As experts in their field, they know to get the best efficiency out of sentries, you have to build them as close to each other as possible. Whilst being fed by a dispenser, these sentries will never be destroyed in battle. But as intelligent as these engineers may seem, there is always a flaw in the bot strategy. In this case, the engineers appear to have developed a fascination with their teleporter. For every couple of seconds, they seem to remember its existence and have a race to see who can get there first. The winner, of course, is teleported straight back to the nest. The loser, however, has to walk all the way back. This continues indefinitely, and for all we know, they could still be there today. But we do know one thing, and that is that the blue engineer is still standing there, still resisting the war going on before his very eyes. He has gained a follower in this heavy, but the heavy soon grows bored and returns to battle, leaving the engineer alone, making his efforts worthless. For our final location, we head over to Koth Sawmill. The bots here have been fighting over this location for years, but for some reason, they find it difficult to survive in this hazardous environment. Nonetheless, they attempt once again to capture the control point, and it appears for once the blue team has succeeded. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, as this medic discovers as he watches all three of his heal targets run blindly into the circular source. If he could feel emotions, he would definitely feel sadness. The medic searches for a new target to heal, and comes across this demo man. After his failure to keep his last patients alive, he immediately pops Uber to try and save him from the saw. Unfortunately, it's not enough, and the demo man is cut in two. The medic is so distraught that he doesn't realise the saw has just saved him from a pyro. Instead, he panics and walks backwards into it, ending his own life. Over on the red team, this soldier and medic appear to be skiving from duty. Instead of fighting, they stand on the outskirts of battle, waiting for it to be over. 
However, the fight is instead brought to them as they are discovered by the blue team. In a moment of panic, the medic pops the Uber to save his own life. This seems to reinvigorate their courage and they run into the fray. But sadly, just like the rest of their team, they fail to look where they're going and they are both killed. Our journey is almost over, but there is one more thing we need to address. For the petitioning of the engineer and Dust Bowl has paid off and he has persuaded his team that fighting is not the answer. Because of this, they have congregated in this corner to demonstrate how they feel. The red team, meanwhile, are just confused as to why they aren't being attacked. Nevertheless, they are happy for the respite. For once, the Badlands are peaceful. No fighting will occur here today. No one knows how long this peace will last, but for all we know, it could mean the beginning of a new day for bots everywhere. Hi, I'm the creator of this video. I put a lot of work into it and I hope you liked it. If you did, maybe consider heading over to my channel at youtube.com forward slash too many moths. You never know, there might even be another bot documentary coming. In the meantime, I'd like to give a big thank you to Sin for featuring me on his channel. That's all for now. Thanks and have fun.